Welcome to the Advanced Cardiac Life Support Chapter on Stable Tachycardia. In the previous chapter, we discussed tachycardia, which is a heart rate faster than the normal resting rate and is greater than 100 beats per minute. We also talked about unstable tachycardia. Let's now focus on stable tachycardia. In stable tachycardia, unlike unstable tachycardia, the patient is stable and there are no significant signs or symptoms present. Some of the rhythms associated with stable tachycardia are the same as those associated with unstable tachycardia, and they include atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, supraventricular tachycardia or SVT, monomorphic VT, and polymorphic VT. To review the specifics of each of these rhythms, you may refer to the video in the previous chapter or read each description found in this chapter. Let's now look at the three remaining rhythms that are associated with stable tachycardia. Sinus tachycardia is when the rate of impulse from the SA node is elevated. AV nodal re-entry is the heart rhythm that occurs because of the malfunctioning of the AV node. It is the most common type of SVT. Multifocal atrial tachycardia is when the atrial pacemaker rhythm is chaotic and comes from more than one focus with a ventricular rate that is more than 100 beats per minute. This rhythm causes the P waves to differ in size, shape, and direction. Now, let's consider a relevant scenario. You are the night nurse on duty, and a 40-year-old woman comes in and is complaining of palpitations. She mentions that she has a history of recurrent heart rates, and she feels like she's having a heart attack. First, assess the situation. The patient is responsive and is breathing. You attach the patient to a monitor and identify tachycardia, as her heart rate is over 100 beats per minute. Call the doctor on duty. Start with interventions. Maintain the patient's airway. Help with breathing and give oxygen if the patient is hypoxemic and monitor her oxygen saturation. Monitor blood pressure and heart rate and conduct a 12-lead ECG and diagnose the patient. Check for persistent tachyarrhythmia. For management of the patient, if persistent tachyarrhythmia has been diagnosed, you need to initiate synchronized cardioversion in the following doses, depending on the diagnosis classification. For narrow regular, apply 50 to 100 joules. For narrow irregular, apply 120 to 200 joules biphasic and 200 joules monophasic. For wide regular, apply 100 joules. And for wide irregular, apply the defibrillation dose. Administer adenosine via IV axis with the first dose of 6mg rapid IV push and a normal saline flush. Administer a second dose of 12mg of adenosine. If persistent tachyarrhythmia is not found to be present, and if the wide QRS is 12 seconds or more, then obtain IV axis and get a 12-lead ECG. Administer adenosine if monomorphic tachycardia is diagnosed. Administer an antiarrhythmic infusion of procainamide, amiodarone, or sodalol. For more information on the doses of each, please refer to the section on antiarrhythmic infusion doses in this chapter. If it is found not to be wide QRS tachycardia, then consider vagal maneuvers, adenosine, beta blockers, and calcium channel blockers. To see the algorithm showing the management of stable tachycardia in detail, please refer to the chart in this chapter. If a patient shows stable tachycardia, then they will not present with symptoms such as hypotension, shock, ischemia, chest pain, AMS, or heart failure. In a case where the patient is stable and has regular heart rhythm, consider administering adenosine and attempting to do vagal maneuvers. Vagal maneuvers and administration of adenosine are the first line interventions for narrow, complex, stable tachycardias. These maneuvers initiate baroreceptors in the aortic arch and the internal carotid arteries, which then cause stimulation of the vagus nerve, which releases acetylcholine. The acetylcholine reduces AV node conduction and that eventually slows down the heart rate. Different types of vagal maneuvers include constant and forceful coughing, holding your breath, gagging, immersing your face in ice cold water, 
applying carotid sinus pressure by putting slight pressure on the carotid sinus for about five seconds, or the Valsalva maneuver, which is forceful exhalation against a closed airway. An example of the Valsalva maneuver is closing your mouth while also pinching your nose and then trying to exhale as if blowing up a balloon. Remember, if regular supraventricular tachycardia is not fixed by adenosine or vagal maneuvers, then the best option is to seek expert advice. This was the chapter on stable tachycardia. Please proceed to the next section of this course to learn more.